winners of the contest of last uh, week, and uh, we, Mr. Gross, uh, we presented them with a special gift, a silver coin representing Apollo 11. Do you want to say a word? Yes, certainly. Thank you for the opportunity. For the opportunity, welcome everyone at the uh, CSA. Welcome to the ISS, and it's a pleasure to speak to all of you, uh, the uh, finalists of the contest. It was a pleasure to read your stories. So a big uh, applaud to all the participants and the finalists. And, and it's good for my, even for my children, I will be able to. Uh, it, it was a great pleasure, your creativity and your imagination, imagination is at the, the basis of everything that is positive in a life. So congratulations. Thanks a lot, David. So here, the media have lots of questions, so we are going to start right away. So many highlights in the last six months, cosmic catches and spacewalks. Can you tell me a little bit about your most memorable moments in this over this six-month period, and what are your final days going to be like on the on the International Space Station? Sorry, you, you, you clipped that towards the end there. Can you repeat the end of the question? Sorry, you, you, you clipped that towards the end there. Can you repeat the end of the question? Uh, the question was just your, uh, your biggest highlights over the last six months and what your final days will be like uh, wrapping up on the International Space Station. So yes, I think, uh, so the final days on Space Station, uh, less than a week Sorry, left. It's very hard to believe it's been an incredible, uh, incredibly full mission and uh, so much uh, activity going on, both in terms of science and in terms of uh, operations. You mentioned the spacewalk, a, a capture, the arrival of the, the first version of the next generation of uh, crew of vehicles. And uh, mostly it's been an incredible human adventure uh, with our crew here, initially six people and then three left. We were left with three of us for a long period and then three more people came a whole new atmosphere on board. And as we're ramping out, what I'm doing for the last few days is really trying to soak it all in, if you want, because I know that uh, comes a, the day I go back to Earth, uh, I will have to pinch myself. I think it will all feel like a dream. I will be maybe wondering if it uh, all really happened. So I'm trying to uh, burn it into my memory uh, as much uh, as I can. Anne-Louise Depaty from Radio Canada. Hello. So, other than the happiness to find you, to see your family again, what are the little pleasures, the everyday pleasures, the little things that you missed when you were in space and that you're very eager to do and to have again on Earth? Of course, the first thing uh, is, is to, to hug my, uh, my children and my wife. Uh, I'm not sure I'll be able to carry them on my shoulders anymore, but, uh, but also feel the wind on my face. Uh, here, of course, we don't have any wind, so I miss that. The other day, I saw the picture of a uh, campfire, and that really struck me. I, I, that's something I really like. And other, of course, a, a meal with my family, my friends, walk in on the street. Here, it's always the same faces. Of course, it's people we like, but to walk on the street. Hello, Maria. Uh, how do you prepare to come back to Earth? Are you, do you have concerns? What is the first thing you're going to do once you're back home? Yeah, how do we uh, get ready? There are lots of techniques, of, as you can, uh, as you can imagine. Of course, there are lots of safety and security measures. We we are studying with my commander, and 
and, and, uh, and with all the procedures. And psychologically, the preparation, the most important is to make sure we leave the station uh, without any regrets and knowing that we did everything we had to do here and, and, and be then available to start life again. And the first thing I would like to do when I come back is, I think, it's going to, to call my wife, Veronique. That's going to be the first thing I will want to do. And when uh, I'll get back home, maybe try to go in the swimming pool because with uh, gravity, I think it's going to be difficult at first. So uh, at least in the pool, I'll feel a little bit like here. Hello, uh, newspaper. What is the thing that is you're going to miss most from the ISS? What is going to, what I'm going to miss, of course, the view uh, from the cupola to, like I just saw Egypt. So the view of Earth, its beauty, so impressive, its grace. Uh, and the, the emptiness, this little uh, blue halo, and this feeling of very uh, strong this strength, but also it's how fragile it is, and this sense of uh, privilege to represent everyone and have this incredible luck and, and uh, opportunity. I'm going to miss that, and of course the team, my brothers and sisters, as we say, uh, we are so close, even uh, closer than friends. I'm going to miss them, and but it's going to stay with me forever. Annie Demet from 98.5. So you're going to fall from the sky soon and go back to, uh, to go go back home. Is, do you have any concern regarding the actual travel, the journey? Of course, there are two points, medical uh, uh, things that are kind of difficult. After six months here without gravity, I, I learn how to uh, move in every direction. And technically, how it's, and, uh, I do not have this sense of balance anymore. And, uh, when I am in orbit, but when I go back down, I think at the beginning, I think that um, it's going to be difficult. I may not be able to walk straight. I may have uh, blood circulation issues when I feel the circulation in my legs and then uh, the muscles, of course, I grew in space a few uh, centimeters. Uh, there is no more, the, the, the space between the disc is larger, so uh, I've been warned that that can be difficult when you go back down to Earth, and that may not be so easy. Amanda Klein with CTV. Can you say that a, a little bit in English, just how you've changed uh, in space and how you're going to sort of readapt once you're back on Earth? And also, if you can explain or, or just tell us a bit about what you're most looking forward to when you come back. Okay, so first off, uh, so things to uh, look forward to and not to look forward to back on, going back on Earth. The things to look forward to, of course, are reunification with uh, my family, my friends, my loved ones. I cannot wait to take my wife, Veronique, in my arms and take my children on my shoulders. Taking my children on my shoulders might, might have to wait a little bit of rehab because kind of, I'll be weak, I think, when I come back. And uh, the, these, the bad aspects of uh, space life and your health is that, on the one hand, I have learned to fly. So I've learned to make flips, and I can be upside down. It doesn't bother me anymore. That's because I basically lost all sense of gravity. I've lost all sense of balance. When I come back to Earth, I'm going to need to learn to walk again. I'm going to be holding someone's hands probably. I might be nauseous or easily disoriented. That's something I'm going to need to it could probably take days or weeks before that gets back. Uh, and also aspect is I, I have grown a little bit. My, my spine has kind of elongated, and the, 
every disk in my vertebra is kind of, you know, squ has uh, expanded a little bit because there's no gravity to squish you down. But when I come back to Earth, immediately I'm going to be squished back down to my original size, and that, that can be quite painful, I'm told. So I'll be careful. Looking forward, perhaps, to uh, jumping in the, the pool uh, uh, because there in the water you can float, and uh, it's quite uh, comfortable. Uh, maybe it will remind me of, of being in my days here in space. From Radio Canada. So this uh, ISS uh, trip was uh, an incredible experience. experience. So what are you most proud of? What is what are you going to bring back with you? I think the most important is the perspective, is the insight that we get. Uh, I'm so privileged to have this insight, and uh, I want to be able to share this heritage and this insight. Uh, the, the fact that the Earth is magnificent and fragile and we need to take care of it, and also a political insight to see here all the flags of all the, pay, the, the countries that have participated to the ISS. So, of course, it's not always perfect uh, on Earth. There are political tensions, real tensions, but in space, we can prove that when we try, when we really concentrate on what we work on, we can make miracles, we can work together. And this is a very hopeful message, and I'm so proud to have been able to part to, to, to have participated to this and work like this. So that's a message for the future generation. The Earth is beautiful, fragile, take, let's take care of us and let's work together to take care of it. And there are no excuses to not do it. Hugo Duchesne, newspaper from Montreal. What was your most challenging thing while you were in space? First, it was the adaptation. It took several weeks uh, for physically to physically adapt. It's very disorienting at first, uh, and a little bit nauseous at first. Uh, the, the brain doesn't understand what is going on with the gravity and the lack thereof, and psychologically uh, adapt to, uh, to the all the work and how everything works. Of course, the uh, training on Earth is, is very good. It's very practical. And But the, there is a time where uh, the two teams, the living team uh, teaches the, uh, the incoming team. So there, there is, uh, that's part of the challenging. And we had to learn, my family and I, we had to learn how to live apart and how to keep the link alive so that it would be a great adventure for everyone. And so that it's posit it was positive. And, and you have to juggle all these things. You have to be a good astronaut, a good husband, a good father, a good friend. So that's the challenge of everyone in life in the end. Marie-Josée Marie from Radio Canada, I'd like to know the next few days, how are you going to spend them? And the landing, what are the risks and what are the maneuvers? So the next few days, it's like the everyday work, the normal work, the maintenance, uh, etc. But we are also packing, so we cannot leave any trace. You can take pictures, but do not leave any trace. The same thing on board. Uh, I have to leave everything perfect for the next team coming in. And after that, we can we, we will bring back uh, a few uh, little things that are precious to us, to us. 
and, and also the theory preparation because all the procedures on the Soyuz, you have to know them. Of course, when I got certified, uh, I, I, had, I, I had them down, but we have to review them to make sure. And we have to change the, the frame of mind so that we can come back uh, safely. And this is going to take a few hours. We're going to fall back on Earth. Uh, we're going to open the parachutes, uh, land in Kazakhstan, and then the, uh, uh, the Russian team are going to recover us and take us to, uh, uh, back to Houston so that we can be reunited with our family. Paul Perrien, journal newspaper from Montreal. It's almost the 50th anniversary of uh, the lunar landing. What did this uh, historic event have on you, and how did it change uh, the way uh, astronauts see things. Yes, it's an extraordinary event. I wasn't born when Apollo 11 landed, but my mother was pregnant. Uh, I don't know if there was some kind of transmission through the amniotic uh, fluid, but of course we all heard uh, the story of what happened that day. Uh, but in my, uh, as I was a child, these images of Earth seen from the moon, it really gave me this uh, uh, quest for adventure. And, and and I was thinking I would like to be like them. I'm going to be healthy. I'll be an explorer, an explorer, and and they, it guided me. And since I've been here in space, when I see all these planets, the moon, the sun, it's it's like a ballet, and and it's more. It becomes more familiar, and. And, and, and I and I think when I'm, we are in orbit, and, and I think of these astronauts 50 years ago in orbit and, and pushing towards the moon, and it's going to happen again, and, and, and it's going to, it's just around the corner. Bonjour David, Philippe Mercure de la presse. Philippe Mercure. When you are going to leave in a few days, how do you feel? Pardon, j'ai ça a coupé, il a coupé, répétez. Sorry, it was cut off. Can you repeat? Je voulais savoir quand vous allez quitter la station, avez-vous l'impression que ça va être un au revoir ou un adieu? Bref, êtes-vous ouvert à une autre mission plus tard? When you're going to leave the station, is it going to be a goodbye or a uh, just a, a short goodbye or forever goodbye? Excusez-moi, je vais demander de répéter encore. Sorry, can you repeat once again? Alors, euh, David, la question était... The so question was, when you're going to leave the station, is it going a short goodbye or a forever goodbye? Are you preparing for another mission? On part toujours d'ici. Well, we always live here saying forever goodbye because we do not decide as representatives uh, for our uh, countries here as operators to, to be part of a mission. We are not uh, the ones who decides that. So it's wiser to uh, leave saying uh, goodbye forever. And then what the future holds for us, of course, we do not know. So it, it was such an adventure. It's, it's, it's easy to uh, close my eyes and come back vi virtually like in a dream. Thank you, David. That's the, the only time we have uh, for you. We'll say goodbye. See you soon and uh, welcome back to Earth very soon. Thank you, every, everyone.
Station, this is Houston.